While efforts to encourage gender diversity in the workplace has increased, progress has been slow. But will this change in the face of Me Too and Time's Up? We asked Boston Consulting Group partner and MD Mariam Jafar about where Malaysia stands and what more can be done. So you did a study on gender diversity in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, so actually, Malaysia, the workforce, the split is higher than average. And at COO level, yep. there is a pretty good even match because of a mandate that exists, right? That there must be a certain percentage of uh, women board members. Yep. But senior management is still very low. So in our entirety, how do we rank? I think there isn't one single metric for how you do in gender diversity. Uh, mm. But if you look at the stats, so globally, um, we have women are 56% of graduates, 38% um, of the workforce, mm. and 15% of senior management. All right. Okay, so CEOs is like 5%. Um, in Malaysia, women are actually 62% of graduates, 54% of the total workforce, and 25% of senior management. Mm. Right, so we do better than the global average on every dimension, yes. but actually the gap between us and the global average is smaller on the senior management side. Okay. Um, and so I usually look at it in terms of two lenses. For me, actually, senior management is the key. I mean, I can look at the total workforce, I can, but I think um, in all the research, it uh, has always shown that it's really when you get women into senior management positions, positions where they are, they are the ones making the decisions and you ha get a significant number of them, that's when you really drive performance. Okay. So I tend to over-index on, um, on where we stand in terms of senior management and while we are higher than the global average, I think you know, we're still lower than, than others, right? So Singapore is at 34%, for example. Okay. Um, so can we do better? So one is where we are relative to, I guess, um, the region. Yeah. Um, two is how have we done over time? Um, and has that ratio moved um, you know, significantly over time or is it a really incremental shift? And unfortunately, I think it is quite incremental. What have studies shown that companies with greater gender equality have over the competitors? Uh, actually, there are a lot of studies, both country studies and global studies. I think one of the more well-known ones is the Catalyst study, right? Um, that has shown time and again that essentially gender diversity drives performance. Companies that have um, you know, more women, especially in senior management, do just better in terms of return to shareholders, in terms of you know, profitability. And that has been repeated in other studies, whether it's a, you know, the MCSI study of uh, public companies or, or you know, country studies that have been done all over the world. But it turns out that there is a very clear correlation between diversity and, um, and how innovative companies are. And when you double click on gender diversity, now we saw that companies which were at the top end of the, uh, of the companies we researched, so the top 20 companies, mm. where you, know, you would have more than um, 25, 40% um, of, the, of the management, senior management being women, they tended to have you know, much higher revenues from innovation, so being more innovative, having more innovative products, and that resulting in revenue, than the companies at the bottom end. It actually matters how many women you have in senior management. So if you look at companies with 0 to 10 percent women, 10 to 20 percent women in senior management, there's actually no noticeable difference um, in terms of how innovative they are. Mm -hmm. But once women go above 20 percent um, in senior management, that's when we start seeing basically that uplift in uh, innovation. From Malaysia, what else needs to change before we do see more of this? What needs to be done? Is it a legal thing? Is it an employer's thing? What needs more change before we do see this push for more gender like uh, equality in the workplace? <laughs> you know, the fact that it's been taken so long, <laughs> right, says that there is no magic bullet, right? Okay. But I think there are, uh, there are three stakeholders here. Um, the women themselves first. Um, companies and then society at large, right? So we've talked, we talked a lot about what companies can do in the report. Mm. Um, so focusing on the initiatives that really matter, whether it's moments of truth, you know, things that we know work like flexibility. Um, so that is what companies need to do. Um, and then the women have to step up, right? Mm. Like uh, I think sometimes we are our own worst enemy, um, not wanting to ask for that opportunity uh, to take on an um, exciting new assignment or just arguing 
you know, with yourself, right? So, um, so we have to, I mean, lean in, as, 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 uh, if, if you want to put it that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Um, and then I think the third leg is society, right? Um, how do we move society to understanding that taking care of the family, taking care of children is not a woman's problem? but the family's problem. Last year, these past few months, very interesting time for women because you see it all over the world, right? This this wave of empowerment, uh, things like sexual harassment issues in yeah. the workplace, uh, gender pay issues, yeah. all that become pushed more to the forefront for, yeah. for various kind of reasons. What do you think this has, you know, doing your study, has this empowerment wave actually sort of like helped make it more aware that, you know, push, make the awareness of your study like higher? Do you think so? Um, you know, I think there are certainly some well-publicized cases. Yeah. Um, for example, women in technology. Um, that has been given a push. And when a few companies, I guess, decide that they want to make a public commitment around it, um, and if other companies basically do the same thing, then that actually, in, in the same industry, right, then yeah. that starts the, the conversations. Um, but, you know, I think for me, the business case for why we need gender diversity has been clear for a long time. Okay, okay. The, the, the studies on these have gone back 10, 15 years, right? So it's not new news. Um, so I think it's, I feel that we can always continue to talk more about these issues um, and more importantly, actually do more.